How do? So, uh, still pretty early. I've just come out of the gym. Just like to thank everyone for the support. People who support me on Patreon, people who bought me a brew, everyone who's been on the channel, um, and for being a supportive community. So, yesterday I met a young lady. She's a little bit younger than me. Sometimes, um, Meeting people, getting out and about, and doing this this kind of work is truly humbling. So this lass is a schizophrenic. That's something that never goes away. I've met people uh, when I worked on the healthcare at Strange Ways who had schizophrenia. Um, she was adopted, this lass. She has two siblings. Uh, her mother did her best with her siblings, were either side of her age. At 13, going through puberty. Uh, schizophrenia it's uh, like a shovel in the face I believe she got schizophrenia or inherited from Keith Keith was her birth father she calls him Keith for good reason he abused her um, at one point as a young 13 year old she set off with a knife to try and find him and kill him so 13 schizophrenic unmedicated um Struggled in school, became, became quite violent, violent outbursts. Uh, the thing about schizophrenia is, you know, these people have hallucinations and they hear voices. Voices inside the red, voices outside the red. Uh, command hallucinations, sometimes these voices are telling you to harm yourself. Sometimes these voices are telling you to harm other people. And sometimes you get both, which is what she got. Uh, she went through the school system, various schools for assessment. Um, she was problematic. She kept getting off, running off. Uh, she was found all over the country. She would just hop trains. You know, she was found in Scotland by police, arrested, uh, basically everywhere. You know, a very unsettled child. Uh, by the time she was 15, she hit Borstal. Um, she was brutalized not sexually, but beaten, fighting even at that young age, incredible strength, uh, very violent, seen as very dangerous and would have been a very dangerous individual. Um, Borstal Cup manager, she got sent to Holloway Prison in Holloway. Again, violent segregation. Uh, she was on officer unlock protocols in order to come out. There had to be a number of staff um you know at times they were literally just opening the door putting food in and taking things out they didn't let her out uh her story's not a brag it's not about look at me look how violent i were or anything like that um but she battered staff she got battered herself but like she said she battered a lot of staff super super dangerous anyway at some point you know the staff were saying to doctors this isn't right there's something wrong with her she needs help at some point, a doctor um, took her under his wing and medicated her. I think she was on Largactal, Largactal four times a day, uh, plus other drugs, and she come right down and she settled down. Yeah, staff saw a different side to her. Again, she's only very young at this point. Because she settled down, they sent her back to Borstal from prison. What happened when she gets back to Borstal? Doctor went, nah, I'm not giving you no meds. So she's unmedicated again and she's battering people. Getting battered, getting battered daily. You know, dragged by her hair, kicked punch. But like she said, she was she was giving as good as she got. Uh, remembers a lot of these beatings, remembers things in depth. Eventually she would come under the mental health act. She did quite a few prison sentences. She got done for carrying knives. Um, she was an individual. Uh, you know, burglar. Like she said, she was doing commercial burglaries, not home burglaries and things like that. You know, not proud of it, but again, it's something she did to survive. Um, psych. Again, a lot of time in seclusion. Seclusion is solitary confinement. She was in cells with no toilet. They would put bedpans in and water. And she would get finger food. I've dealt with people like this. I've done it. Finger food, no knife and fork. Just stuff you can eat with your fingers. Like she said, she might get a bowl of soup. 
you know, that she'd have to drink out the, the bowl or she was trying to eat food with a bit of paper plate. Again, beating after beating after beating, a lot of this time unmedicated and super violent. Uh, again, we filmed about an hour and a half. I'm going to put it out as a Mental Health Mondays, part one and part two. Her name's T. It's going to be pixelated out. Um, one of the humbling things about this story is it's the first time she ever spoke out. She's told little bits to psychologists, but, you know, never gone into depth. It was quite emotional. Um, very caring human being, uh, despite what she's been through. You know, um, you could tell she got a good heart. Psych wards, again, some of the stuff we talked about, we didn't talk about on camera, deeply disturbing. Like she said, she was known to be a handful even when she was medicated, so she was left alone. Yeah, she would f fight men. Um, in the psych wards, uh, she was on a couple of mixed wards. Yeah, Wh whoever deemed that this was right, I've, I've no idea. Like she said, a lot of it's down to doctors. So you've got a mixed ward. You've got female patients, all ages, all being abused either as children or young women, you know, uh, being abused at the hands of paedophiles and rapists. And guess what most of the males or men on the wards were? Yep, you guessed it. Paedophiles or serial rapists, some of the worst. And the women were abused by male patients on them wards. She witnessed some of that. Um, she did intervene at times and try and protect people. And, you know, probably one of the worst parts of it was that some of these women were abused by staff, sexually raped. Yeah. Um, that's not a diss on psych nurses. I'm sure a lot of psych nurses you know, good ones, if they've been around long enough, will have seen some shocking uh, abuse of patients by staff. My mate, 40 years in there, you know, he's banged heads with people, people who, you know, just like prison, you get people abused. That should never, ever, ever stop remembering there's a lot of good people that do that job. But yeah, staff uh, raping patients, mixed wards, they're some of her worst nightmares. She has nightmares every day. Um, she's medicated now. Uh, she's badly disabled. Uh, she has a wheelchair outside. We took the wheelchair when I went and interviewed her so she could go to in a public toilet. She tries her best in the house. She does have a carer. She tries to be independent. Most of her disability, arthritis, osteoarthritis and the like, comes on the fact she was just continually restrained. You know, 10 staff at a time. Uh, getting beat up before CNR control and restraint what I learned which is all about you know locks arm locks wrist locks and the like uh, people just used to grab a limb trying to control people and they would twist it to apply pain and sometimes limbs got broken she's had broken bones in her legs ankle arms wrists and face she reports going um, from um, one prison to a psych ward on the floor of a van, 10 staff in full riot gear, uh, all with her feet on her, on the floor, so she couldn't get up, and, you know, she was restrained like that. So lots of nightmares, but like I said, back to today, she's been free of the sort of psych type stuff, only for a short period of time for her age, a couple of years younger than me. Uh, she is grateful to be in the community. She is. She lost touch with her siblings for a long time because of the, the violence and everything else. She's now back in touch with them, which is amazing. She's got an amazing family who look after her and care for her, even though initially she wouldn't have anything to do, them, to do with them, and she abused them. It's very, very humbling. You know, she's just great. I took her out. You know, we spent four hours chatting. She's, she's just grateful. She's grateful she's here. Uh, she's grateful to be in the community. Uh, she has a cat. She loves a cat. It's just... She still has schizophrenia. Her biggest worry is that if the meds ever stop working, because sometimes they do, you know, they have to change medications and stuff like that. If they ever stop working and 
the schizophrenia comes back and she gets locked up that she'll never get out so you know you've got to wish her well so the next two mondays part one part two of t her face will be pixelated out uh, she is broad yorkshire lass you know at times it's difficult to hear what she's saying but everyone who suffers with mental health watch that it brings things home uh complex ptsd nightmares continuous yeah an amazing lady i'm gonna leave it there i'm off to work today uh longer content friday i'm gonna be back with ruth and then a couple of interviews next weekend thanks for your continued support thanks for coming i'll see you there